This little piece here is what you are on. This green ribbon here uh, is not the river, that's the floodplain. And the river is a little tiny channel uh, snaking around back and forth in that floodplain. And you're going to be on that little tiny channel. You're not going to see much of the floodplain. The floodplain is huge. It's the largest force of floodplain in the state of Florida, 112,000 acres. It's about this whole big blue line, not just the tiny river line, but all this that snakes down. And, you know, that's what matters. When we started that morning, we had trouble even seeing that tiny river line, which isn't so tiny when you're in it. We're on the Apalachicola River, the water that feeds the famous oysters, the river you drive over on I-10. This was day one of River Trek 2012. 11 paddlers tackled 107 miles in five days in a fundraiser for the Apalachicola Riverkeeper. It just seemed like a, a great way to spend five days on the river uh, with a good group of people while also uh, being able to help fundraising for uh, a, a cause that I believe in and support. When she sent the email, I sent back an emphatic all caps, yes, like single word answer. Part of getting to know the river was getting to know the basin around it. I met Bruce Mee there, he's kind of a legend, and uh, it was just an interesting little piece of, uh, of North Florida I'd never seen before. Got to do a little splunking, that was fun. <laughs> Georgia, didn't you say something about going down a river? <laughs> <laughs> this is seriously the last place I thought I'd be today. You know, really? There's only about a thousand of them left. Most of them are right around here. So what you see now is just these re-sprouts from the residual rootstocks. And we have been um, <clears throat> mapping the locations of all of them. It's a federal, federally endangered species and fencing them off to keep the deer out of them. After we set up camp, we attended a lecture. You all know a lot about the bay and the impacts in the bay. You've been reading it in the paper. My talk is focused on the impacts in the river, which there's a lot of, a lot of impacts that people don't know about. There's two types of habitat in the floodplain that are really, really important. One is aquatic habitats, and the other is forested or sort of terrestrial kind of habitats that are inundated. When, when the river is high enough... She answered our questions until it was almost dark. ...high enough, barges can go. Why don't we have a grinder? I've been in a lot of rivers in Florida, and I've never seen that. You know, that's, not, that's kind of an uncommon thing. So, so we're going to start and clean up and break camp, and we're going to get ready and um, hike the bluff with um, some friends from the Nature Conservancy this morning. I was up there from the other side. I haven't climbed it from the river, so it's going to be exciting to climb up. It's the highest river bluff anywhere in Florida. And so we'll have a great view up there. The fog's lifting a little bit to where I think we'll have a, a wonderful view. It's a dynamic place. So it's, uh, this is, I think, one of the outstanding campsites in Florida right here. Good morning, you guys. Good morning. Aren't you pretty? But it must have been chilly, but beautiful over there. Is this part of the Garden of the right here? No, you guys are backstage. <laughs> You're on the north end of the uh, bluff. So you guys ready? We're bushwhacking. Do you guys? All right. So, come on up. Hey, Junior Marine. Is everybody making it? Yep. Josh, I'll carry you the rest of the trip. <laughs> the sand hill does kind of come right up to the edge, and um, they've replanted some wire grass, done rest, some restoration work in here. So it's starting to come back. I feel something moving around my ankles, and it's a snake. And then I took a picture of it, and, and I called everybody else over, and it turned out to be a copperhead, and about, I don't know, maybe two or three feet long. And it was, I'm assuming it was still a little cold. Welcome to living outdoors. 
Six miles down the river, we took another quick side trip. Sutton Lake. Most of these are cypress that, that have the big buttress bottoms, but some of them are tupelo trees. They both have that same buttressed bottom because where you see the green mossy part, you know, the, when the river's flooding, it goes all the way up to that buttressed part. We studied the trees in the 1970s. We surveyed trees all up and down the river. My colleague, Melanie Darst, and I repeated a lot of those surveys in the 2000s to see how the floodplain had changed. And we determined that there was a loss of four million trees in the non-tidal floodplain, primarily in swamps. And of those, the, the Ogeechee Tupelo got hit the hardest. And that happens to be the source of Tupelo honey, is the Ogeechee Tupelo. Tupelo requires wet conditions. And that's why it, it suffered the most in these water level declines that we've had over the last 30, 40 years. In part two, we conclude River Trek 2012, after a few well, side stops along the way. <laughs> For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz, the Viegas.